Hey guys, Nerdy Hatter here. Welcome to episode 11 of Weekly Comical. I know I've been away for a while and I'm sorry about that, but let's get right to it. I'm really excited about some of the stuff I have for you guys today. Alright guys, first up we have Suicide Squad number one, and this is an awesome read. Following up on the uh, Suicide Squad movie, having something to read if you're a little hungry for a little bit more Suicide Squad, this is an awesome issue to pick up. It's showing the, uh, the, the team that you see in the movie of Enchantress, Killer Croc, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Boomerang, and Katana, but in the comic, they haven't been a team. Uh, certain members of them, like Katana, Enchantress, and Killer Croc, haven't been on the Suicide Squad before, while Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and Boomerang have been there. They're kind of the veterans of the team, and it's cool seeing these new members kind of meld into the old and seeing how they work together and the rapport they have when they're about to go off on their first mission as a unit. And it's really cool seeing the little funny scenes that certain members of the squad have with other members, such as uh, Killer Croc and Boomerang. Boomerang kind of gets weirded out by Killer Croc, doesn't really like him that much in this comic. It's really, really funny, and I can't wait to see where this Suicide Squad run goes. Very excited for uh, Suicide Squad number two, which is right up next. Alright guys, like I said, next up is Suicide Squad number two. This is an awesome continuation of a cool, uh, fun first issue. Now this, this issue really, really surprised me because it took the story to a whole different place that I wasn't really expecting but really really liked. It was really cool seeing them actually go on their mission and seeing it through. This mission took a very unexpected turn towards the end of the comic which was an ending I was not expecting at all but really really enjoyed. It was really really cool uh, deep cut for comic book fans such as myself. I really really liked it. I'm really excited to see Suicide Squad number three because I'm loving this series so far and I'm loving seeing this team work together and how their missions go as a unit. And if you thought that was it for the Suicide Squad, well you're wrong because we have a special issue and that is Suicide Squad War Games and a special bigger issue and it was awesome. I actually really like this because it's being able to see another mission with the Suicide Squad with a different roster slightly and getting to see how they work. In this one we actually see Diablo and it's really really cool seeing uh, Diablo with the team but it's also with a couple different members like I think the character's name is War Dog but don't get too attached to War Dog. Uh, this was actually really cool because it's them going on more of a diplomatic mission and it is really really interesting. If your comic book shop has this special issue in stock I suggest you go pick it up because it's really interesting and I really liked it and if you're a fan of the Suicide Squad you will too. Alright guys, next up we have Old Man Logan. Yeah, I know, not as cool as the actual claws, I know. But, this issue, really, really cool. Lots of blood and guts for a Wolverine fan. If you're really into uh, gory, violent comics, like I said, this series is for you. Because Old Man Logan, The Last Ronin, is an awesome little story. And I'm loving it, because I'm a big fan of Japanese cultures, like I've said every time I've reviewed one of these comics. And I'm a big fan of Wolverine. He's one of my favorite Marvel characters. And I love the Old Man Logan story arc, seeing this old, grizzled Logan. He's already more brooding than Logan already is. And this comic is just awesome, and it's awesome getting my fill of Old Man Logan before we get to see the th third Wolverine movie, which is titled Logan. And I can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome seeing this old, chiseled Hugh Jackman Wolverine up on screen, and it's going to be badass. I guarantee that. Now, this comic is also badass. I love seeing the battles that he's having from the past and the present, and it's really cool seeing these two uh, timelines conflict, conflict. Uh, contradict each other and I can't think of the right word uh, parallel they parallel each other there we go and it is really really cool I love seeing two timelines of old man Logan going at it with the same uh, foe and kind of knowing how to defeat him but also not how to it's really really cool if you're a big fan of Wolverine a big fan of blood guts and gore go pick up old man Logan the last Ronin alright guys next up we have Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps issue 3 I am loving seeing my favorite Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, back in the mainstream, seeing him have his own comic, seeing him being a badass with his Green Lantern ring once again, and not that stupid Green Lantern gauntlet. The ring is always the best, and seeing Hal Jordan back with his ring is always warming my heart whenever I pick up one of these issues, and I love seeing him back at it in his suit, back as the Green Lantern Hal Jordan. What I really like about this series is that the Green Lantern Corps itself is more of a background character. It's trying to find its way back in the universe, sort of in the background of the story, while Hal Jordan 
in full-fledged Green Lantern mode is out there being the badass space cop we know and love. And that's the full front of the story, him going up against the uh, Sinestro Corps and trying to beat them back as Sinestro's trying to become the main policing unit in the universe with his Sinestro Corps. The ending of this uh, comic, as a Hal Jordan fan, really kind of shocked me and surprised me. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys because you guys got to go pick this up yourselves because if you want to know what I'm talking about, you should read it for yourselves. I liked the comic. I didn't like the ending because as a Hal Jordan fan, I wasn't expecting it, but maybe you'll like it, so go read it. All right, guys, next up was a surprisingly emotional comic for me because there are a lot of, there's not a lot of fighting in this comic. It's really Batman dealing with Gotham Girl after the aftermath of the last issue, issue number five of the Batman series. And it's really interesting seeing how he goes about dealing with Gotham Girl after everything that's happened. And it gets really emotional towards the end of this comic. It was very surprising to me and really hit me where I live. It was, it was intense. I really like the comic though and Batman fans are going to like it because it shows not just the buff, brooding, badass Batman that we know and love. It shows the carrier, the nurturer that lies beneath the cowl because Batman is just not a dude who goes around beating people up. He can comfort people, he can get down to earth with people, because he is just a man. He's not uh, one of the gods of the pantheon of the DC Universe. He is just a man. And I really like that this comic shows that. If you're a Batman fan and you love the man beneath the cowl, you're going to love this comic. Go pick it up, follow the Batman series, because I've been liking it, and I'm sure you will too. Next up, you guys, we have Justice League number four, and oh my god, you guys, the intensity in this series. Seeing the Justice League up, go up against this foe has been intense, it's been crazy. They are struggling so much and it's awesome seeing our heroes trying to go to the brink to defeat this enemy. And seeing that this new Superman is really having a tough time becoming a part of the team because this isn't the Superman that this Justice League worked together with. The one that they went through it all with. This is a stranger, but he looks like their Superman. And it's really hard for them to accept this stranger into their ranks. But it's awesome seeing him earn their trust and become a member of this Justice League. And it's really important for Justice League to have a Superman. If you're really a fan of the Justice League and you love seeing them go up against impossible odds, there are some pretty damn impossible odds in this series right now. And it's really, really interesting. And the foe is still a mystery to us all because it's very cryptic how they reveal themselves. And they never really fully reveal themselves. They're still kind of holding back and I can't wait for the full reveal of who these uh, foes are. It's really, really exciting and I'm looking forward to how this series goes on. Holy shit, you guys, talk about Unexpected. Now, there's this character in the Flash series that I'm really, really liking. I'm not going to say who it is because it will spoil the ending for you guys if you haven't read this comic, but oh my god, the twist with his character took me by surprise. I was not expecting this at all. If you've read the comic, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, read it for yourself to find out because holy crap, it is insane. And it is awesome seeing how ruthless and how vicious Godspeed is. Godspeed is crazy intense and amazing. I am loving uh, seeing how he progresses because they're still gradually showing you who Godspeed is and just how vengeful and vicious and a killer he is and it's awesome seeing how he just rips everyone's speed away because one of the problems I was silently having with this series was everybody was becoming a speedster because of the speed force storms that were happening in the story everyone had speed powers holy crap there were too many speedsters everywhere Godspeed took care of that I didn't realize that it was a setup to just power up this villain and holy crap it was awesome seeing what he did and all the speedsters in central city and all that were getting their speed ripped away throughout these uh this series and it was to power god speed up so he can get faster and faster and it was really cool seeing how that took care of the speedster problem that a lot of people were having with the series i'm really enjoying the flash series as i always say i'm a big fan of the flash barry allen is amazing I'm loving this series, and if you're a Flash fan, you will too. Next up, we have Batman Detective Comics 940, and holy crap, you guys, Batman Comics will not stop tugging at my heartstrings this week. Batman Detective Comics 940 had this really emotional, 
part of the story that was very integral to the story that I'm, I, it's weird to admit, but I actually cried and then got pissed a few pages later because, holy crap, twists and turns and various things in the story. I'm really enjoying this detective comics run. I'm loving seeing how the story is coming to fruition with the government and the military and Batman and his crew all going up against them. And wow, this story has a very cryptic, very twisty ending that I was not expecting, but I loved. And Tim Drake is slowly becoming one of my favorite Robins, even though my favorite Robin will always be Jason Todd, that snarky little asshole. I love him. Um, but Tim Drake, is, I'm getting really uh, popular with. I'm really enjoying him. And if you're a big fan of Tim Drake, you're going to love this series because he's the only Robin we see in it. Uh, I guess you could count Nightwing pops up every now and then, but I don't count him. This was awesome. Go pick it up. Oh, man. Time flies by when you're having fun. We're already at the end of the video. Here we are with Green Lantern's number six. Uh, one of my biggest issues with the Green Lantern series was Jessica Cruz. Uh, I liked her character, but not enough for what the writers were doing. With her constant anxiety and how she was constantly failing to be able to make a construct and be a successful Lantern. That was really annoying to me. I thought they were going to continue that throughout the entire series. I was delightfully surprised with Green Lantern's number six. Here we see Jessica Cruz become a full-fledged Green Lantern, and I am very happy with that because taking an aspect of the series that I didn't like and actually using it to a, an advantage and flipping it on its side and making it something that I love. It became a run that I really, really loved because seeing what they did with her character. Now she's a full-fledged Green Lantern. I have no problems with her at all. I'm really loving how... Um, her becoming a full-fledged Green Lantern uh, fixes, not fixes, there was nothing wrong with it, but uh, kind of changes, warps, and makes the relationship she has with Simon Baz really, really cool. I really enjoyed this comic. The uh, ending, the kind of uh, uh, slowing of the story was very nice. I enjoyed it very much. The kind of downtime at the end of the comic, it was very, very nice. I enjoyed this issue. As a big Green Lantern fan, I am becoming more and more a fan of Simon Bass and Jessica Cruz as a team, and I'm loving this run. My mind, you guys, look at the time. It's the end of the episode. That's it for this episode of Weekly Comic Call. I hope you guys enjoyed my little reviews of all these issues. I hope you guys go pick some up for yourselves. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoy those issues. If you do pick them up, uh, don't forget to comic, comic, uh, comment any comics you want me to read or review in weekly comic haul i will gladly go pick them up read them and put them in the next video and also don't forget to like comment and subscribe and as always you guys nerdy hatter out